Good evening and welcome to Middlesex Update. I'm your host, Melissa Hurley, and I hope you're enjoying your summer. It is election season, so for the next few shows, we're going to feature different candidates that are running for different offices. Tonight, we have with us first Warren Tolman, who many of you probably remember. He was a state senator. He's from Watertown, and he ran for lieutenant governor a few years back. Warren, welcome to Middlesex Update. Good to be with you, Melissa. Thanks for inviting me. Great. Well, thanks for coming. And you've been a state senator, you were a candidate for lieutenant governor, and I was actually reading your website today, and I saw that oh. you have been elected class president from sixth grade through law school. So it seems that you've always been um, head of the student body. Yeah, there's a mutant gene somewhere in my body. You know, mm. uh, it's always dangerous when people go to my website. Um, but that, that is, you know, I've always uh, enjoyed taking leadership roles and, mm -hmm. and fighting for things I believe in, whether mm -hmm. it be in sixth grade or, uh, you know, it, at the state house. Yes, you've changed a little campaign. bit from sixth grade on. I hope they, on, they but have, yeah. It, it's not whether we could have a good dance anymore. Mm -hmm. you know? But things well, are going well. Good, I'm glad to hear. And so when, when did you decide to run for governor? Um, you had a great showing when you ran for lieutenant governor. You always raised some, um, you know, or a strong voice at the state house. Tell me when you decided to uh, run for governor. This is actually a, largely a natural progression. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a state rep. I was a state senator. I served up in Beacon Hill for eight years. I was frustrated with what I saw, which is why I ran for lieutenant governor. Scott Hoshbarger and I almost won. Jane, Salucci, Jane Swift and, and, and Paul Salucci won instead. And uh, I decided that I wanted to continue the battle, that you know, it was time to put the people's interests ahead of the special interests. You know, lobbyists spend more money on uh, Beacon Hill and, and, and than they do in all but two other states, only New York and California. And we're not the third largest right. state. They're spending more money, Melissa, because they're getting more results. And uh, I think I'm frustrated by that. I want to take them on. And so I, you know, as a clean elections candidate, I'm in a unique situation to be able mm -hmm. to do so. Uh, and I'm not a clean elections candidate because I care about campaign finance reform as much as I care about uh, public education. You know, I'm the only one who sends his kids to the public schools in this race. Interesting. Uh, for health care, you know, the, the 700,000 people in Massachusetts who do not have health care today, health insurance today or for, for fighting for our environment or protecting uh, the affordable housing that we have and, and encouraging more affordable housing. You know, we, I, my mom and dad, Melissa, started my family in a federal housing project. Mm -hmm. uh, and I want to make sure that those opportunities available for other people that right now do not have it. You know, if you grew up in Watertown, if you grew up in Somerville or Medford or Malden or Stoneham, it's very difficult to stay in the community in which you grew up. Right. And people are having a real difficult time. And, and the government has to play a role to help to, to increase the supply of affordable housing, not just for lower income people, but for moderate income people. And I'm talking about policemen, mm -hmm. firefighters, teachers, librarians, DPW workers that want to stay in the community in which they work. And it's interesting because you talked about a few of your issues. Would you say those are your top issues um, when, if you were to get elected? Because I think that so many people see you as just a clean elections candidate. And well, there's much more to your platform than that. Absolutely. So. As you've seen on my website, warrentolman.com, mm -hmm. there's a lot more there. I actually wrote a book, 105 pages or so, about the really? different things that I want to take uh, uh, to the people of Massachusetts. And, and, and uh, you know, those are some of the highlights, certainly. Um, you know, full-day kindergarten and early childhood education is very important mm -hmm. to me. We just took a step back with these budget vetoes that were recently announced. Uh, I think it's appropriate that we try to do things to cut state government where appropriate. Uh, the auditor highlighted $50 million in waste at the MBTA. You know, there, there are things that we're doing that are wrong. I want to take on the prescription drug industry, Melissa, because mm -hmm. I want to lower prescription drug costs. I find it unconscionable that people in Massachusetts in the 21st century have to go to Canada to lower their prescription drug costs. You know, as someone who uh, was, a, was a legislator, I'm tired of seeing former constituents have to make a decision between meals and medication. Uh, and, and unfortunately, Melissa, it's because of the pharmaceutical industry having a big impact on mm -hmm. Beacon Hill with their lobbyists and, and, and their uh, cronies feathering the nest of the, of the gang up there. Uh, and I want to fight to change that. And as a clean elections candidate, someone who doesn't take more than $100 from anybody, I'm in a great position to do that. I will, I'm uniquely situated to do that. I'm the only clean election statewide candidate. Right. And I'm going to be in a great pos position to reform the legislature and the legislative process and take on the likes of Tommy Finner in which I'm doing. I know, and your ads talk about that as well. Um, talking about clean elections, though, for a moment, there are a lot of viewers out there who just hear about clean elections, and it, it's really a little bit deeper once you actually read the entire law and see what it entails. Um, tell me about your campaign as a clean elections candidate, because you've also run before as a non-clean sure. elections candidate. What are the differences? 
Well, it's because I ran as a non-clean elections candidate that I want, you know, when we didn't have it in 1998, right. that I very much wanted to change the system because I've seen the corrupting influence of big money and special interest money on the political process. The law basically was passed in 98 by, on a two to one margin, 67% mm -hmm. of the people voted to change the campaign finance laws and supported this law. Basically what it says is if you agree to abide by spending limits, so total cap on your campaign, and you agree to accept not more than $100 from anybody, and you do some certain other things to qualify, so I had to get 6,000 qualifying mm -hmm. contributions between five and 100 bucks in Massachusetts, you're a clean elections candidate, and you qualify for public funds. Well, the legislature, because 72% uh, of them did not have any opposition uh, two years ago and basically the same percentage now, doesn't want clean elections. They don't want competition. They don't want accountability. There are many people that work hard day in and day out that serve the people of their districts very well. But, you know, it's nice not having a race. Uh, but I think it'll make them better public servants. And I think as a governor, I'll be in a much stronger position to say no to that the auto insurance industry. Mm -hmm. You know, Melissa, I have a plan to lower auto insurance rates in the Common Mass Commonwealth of Massachusetts for every person on an average of $250. Sure, it's taken on the auto insurance industry. Mm -hmm. I'm not afraid to do that. Uh, it, it basically will say, look, if you like the current that system. That across the board? Is that the, 250 on, on um, average. Like Act driving records or anything like that? Uh, no. It, it, on average, it depends on where you live. In Western Mass, it'll be closer to $200. Mm -hmm. In more urban areas like Dorchester and Mattapan, it'll be closer to $600. But it'll average out about $250. It's equivalent That's of a great. billion dollar tax cut. Just by simply opting it into my system, which basically gives up your right to sue for non-economic pain and suffering. But the trial attorneys and the auto insurers, they don't want this. I say people can make their own decisions. Uh, but they don't want to give choice. Pennsylvania did, uh, and, and their rates have gone down. We have the third highest auto insurance rates in the country, and I don't accept that. Uh, and I'm going to fight to change it, and I will change it, and it'll be a couple hundred bucks in everybody wants uh, pocket, uh, every driver who, who drives in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I look forward to hearing more about that. Clean elections, was, did it hinder you in fundraising? Um, was it harder to go out and ask someone for the, the campaign limit, or was it easier harder to go and ask them for the hundred dollars and based on the clean elections and knowing that you had to get so many donations? Uh, it was a lot of work, Melissa, but the, the most difficult part about clean elections is that uh, everybody told me that, that clean elections was dead, that they were never going to appropriate money and that I would, my campaign was all done. Uh, and uh, I proved them wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, they've counted me out. The Big Tobacco counted me out when I was uh, fighting against them in the when legislature to mm -hmm. promote public health and to keep kids from smoking. I'm the father of three young children, uh, 12, 9, and 4, and I'm tired of seeing young kids smoking. So I filed a bill taking on the tobacco industry. They hadn't been beaten 25 years. They haven't been beaten since, but we beat them. 17 lobbyists spent over a million bucks. We beat them up in Beacon Hill. I'm proud of that. They told me that I would never be successful in trying to uh, make the MWRA project smaller than it was. We ended up cutting $800 million off the MWRA project at Deer Island. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very proud of that. I'm proud of the fact that I pushed for the first oversight of the big dig. It took me several years to do it, but we got it. Paul Salucci ignored it. We passed the law. He ignored it. Uh, so they tell me all the time that I can't do X, Y, or Z, and I continue to prove them wrong. And when I'm governor, and they tell me I can't stand up for seniors and, and, and prescription drugs and lower those costs, they'll be wrong then. When they tell me I'm not going to be successful in my quest to lower auto insurance rates, they'll be wrong then. When they tell me I can't do more to improve public education and we'll never see full-day kindergarten, I'll prove them wrong then. Warren, you've worked in the legislature, so you've been through many budget sessions. And um, Massachusetts legislators just recently finished a budget session. How important is it for the next governor to have been a legislature and actually participated in those budget sessions? Because, as you know, there seems to be, for the public anyways, who isn't involved with them, it seems to be um, a disconnect between the budget when it's in, in the legislature to when it hits the governor's office, and then there's all these vetoes made, and then you find out that it may be somehow the sum of that money can be restored and so forth and so forth. How important do you think it is knowing that someone's been there and actually been in those meetings and participate in that se well, those sessions? I, I think it's helpful, Melissa, to have that perspective. Um, I don't think it's mandatory. I think that uh, it's more important that we have someone who, ha who has an outsider's perspective mm -hmm. like I do. Look, I've served up there for eight years. I've been out of there for four years. Uh, and, you know, I'm proud of my record, even while I was up there, of standing up and fighting for reform. 
I think it's outrageous, Melissa, that only twice in the last 15 years have we passed a budget on time. And when I'm governor, I'm going to pass legislation that says, look at legislators, if you don't pass the budget on time, because cities and towns need to know mm -hmm. where their money's coming to come from and how much they're going to get. If you don't pass that budget on time, you're not going to get paid. And that's basically it. New York State does that, and you can rest assured that they're, they're, they're quicker about getting the budget passed than they used to be. Uh, and I think it's time for someone in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to exert the type of leadership to move our Commonwealth in the right direction, to end the days of cronyism and patronage. Look, we're never going to get rid of every cronyism and patronage job out there. But you think about the Mass Turnpike. It costs two and a half times per mile to maintain a mile of the Mass Turnpike as it does any other road in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I find that unacceptable. Mm -hmm. The time they're increasing the tolls and the like, we're paying for that. And I don't think that has to be, and I don't accept that it is just because it's been that way. I want to fight to change it. And uh, you know the, the type of leadership that I will bring is the same type of leadership that I've shown on this campaign trail, taking on Tommy Finner and standing up to him on clean elections, fighting for judicial independence. Uh, when, he, when he called for election of judges, I thought it was a real bad idea. And I spoke up, but no one else did. When he pitted one incumbent congressman against another because he wanted to settle an old grievance, I criticized him for it. You know, when the budget process was late, I was alone saying this is outrageous that we're this late with our budget. I mean, we were the last state in the union last mm -hmm. year to adopt a budget. So uh, I'm going to continue to stand up. And uh, when Tommy Finneran, uh, Boss Finneran, wants to work with me, when I'm governor, we'll work together. When he's going to continue the old day, days and, and the cronyism and patronage and business as usual, I will stand up to him and fight him with every fiber I have. And last time I checked, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts governor is elected by all the people. Tom Finneran got 8,100 votes in his last election. I think this, it, it, this isn't a, a co-equal sharing mm -hmm. of government here. One person is the governor, represents all the people. Another person represents a small fraction. You've talked about um, health care, Medicare, the auto industry. If elected governor, what are your top three goals? for year 2003? Public education, as, he, as I said, the only mm -hmm. one who actually sends his kids to public mm -hmm. schools, early childhood education and the like, and making sure that we attract new people into the teaching profession at a time when 40% of them are going to re retire in the next 10 years, 40% of teachers. Secondly, uh, health care, uh, taking on the prescription drug industry and providing people in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts in the 21st century with health care through a single payer system, which basically we've, we have studies that show we can provide health insurance to everybody without any more money into the health care system. That's progressive. Mm -hmm. That's moving our state in the right direction. That's leadership. We will do that. And then finally, uh, just changing the culture up there. And that penetrates, penetrates through every issue that's out there, uh, through affordable housing, which is a passion of mine because of my roots, uh, to protecting our environment. Look. We're losing 44 acres of open space a day here, Melissa. Right. Uh, you know, economic development, we need to ensure that we have the types of jobs that are going to be out there for my family and your family so that they're able to, to number one, have the skills, but also have the jobs to, to, to match those skills with and to keep our economy moving forward. I wanted to ask you one question. You said public education was your um, first goal, and you talked about recruiting teachers. Um, and I think I read that you were actually a substitute teacher for I a was, while. Yeah. How do you see, and I said this to Todd for a little while as well, how do you see us attracting teachers to teachers' profession? Because if you think about it, they're probably the most underpaid. They work many more hours, and they have such a big responsibility. As for some kids, that's, they're actually their role model. And it's not the easiest job so in the world. So how do you see My this? worst headache in the world was when I was teaching uh, eighth graders. Uh, it was, it My was, worst headache in the world was when I said this to Todd. So. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, and we have to respect them, first of mm -hmm. all. Paul Salucci used to bash public school teachers. I don't think that's the way. I also don't believe that the answer is MCAS as a sole graduation criterion. It doesn't make sense to me, uh, or as a graduation criterion at all. What I would do, I have a specific plan that does not cost a penny. It's basically the state offers new teachers who are willing to commit for, for five years teaching or being a nurse, because nurses is also facing a shortage. Mm -hmm. The average age of nurses is 47. If you commit for five years, Melissa, you then get a, uh, access to a lower interest loan between 0 and 2% down, if you're chosen through, the, through a process, 0 or 2% down off your existing current market rate. Mm -hmm. So if it's 7%, you might get between 5 and 7% for your mortgage. The state can do this through the issuance of something called private activity bonds. 
It doesn't cost the state anything, and yet we're given this tremendous benefit. If it's two points off on a mortgage, on the average cost of a home in Massachusetts, over a 30-year mortgage, that's $100,000 we will be saving. Yeah, over for five years, I mean, that's great. And hopefully these teachers will remain committed to the teaching profession, uh, many or nursing profession. Many of them uh, do it for a couple of years and then back out. I don't think the answer is a one-shot mm -hmm. $20,000 certificate and hope they stay there, as we've seen many of them have left. I think you, you, you ask them for a commitment of five years, you get that commitment, and uh, it, it, they'll be great teachers for my kids and, mm -hmm. and your family and, and everybody else's. Sounds good. I want to thank you for being on Middlesex Update and wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much, Melissa. Thank nice you, to be with you. Thank nice you. To see you. We are back here on Middlesex Update. I'm Melissa Hurley, and we are continuing our election coverage. We're here with present state representative Tim Toomey. And Tim, thank you for being on the program. Thank you for having me, Melissa. Some of you don't know that um, Tim is not only a state representative and a city councilor for Cambridge and a state rep for Somerville and Cambridge, but he is also a local access producer. You have, what's the name of your show? Uh, Conversation with Tim Toomey. Conversation with Tim Toomey. And it, and it's on Cambridge and Somerville. So we're going to kind of put you in the hot seat this time. <laughs> we're going to reverse it. You're a city councilor. You've been on the school committee. How long have you been a state rep? Since 1992, I was elected. So com completing my 10th uh, year as a state representative. Very good, very good. 10, and years. did your district change in the redistricting? It did changed a little bit. They uh, lost a little bit in Somerville and picked up a little bit in Cambridge. Um, but the heart of it stayed about the same. I represent most of East Cambridge and the East Somerville, the Union Square of Somerville. Mm -hmm. That remained the same. Mm -hmm. It's a great uh, district to represent. Yeah, it it's seems a working it. class district, mm -hmm. uh, which is great. Mm -hmm. And it's nice that you're on the city council as well in Cambridge because you can deal with the local issues and you have a better sense of the local issues, I would assume, because right, you you're dealing with them and the then you bring that perspective to the state house. What the house. problems are that the cities are feeling. And they're feeling it the pinch right now, certainly with the fiscal crisis that the state has been uh, going through. And uh, as I said, I've been there for 10 years, and uh, each of those uh, years that I was there, we've seen the budget uh, grow and expand, mm -hmm. certainly mm -hmm. in the areas of public uh, education, with right. the Education Reform Act. Billions of dollars have been sent back to the local communities, public safety money, health mm -hmm. uh, care money has been increased. This is the first year we've actually, that we've had to make some cutbacks, and it's been very painful, especially for a lot of the Yeoman Service programs. And, the elderly and, and everything so uh, but the uh, economy and the revenue just is not coming in and, and unfortunately it seems it had to be an across the boards cut um, but I think it's sometimes hard for the citizens at home because they only hear about a bill when it's if, either if it, the media picks it up or if it has some strong backing or strong um, opposition or when it gets vetoed or passed and they don't hear about you know, they're a legislator and they're trying to fight for it and, and what it really means. I think sometimes people don't know exactly what a bill means the until, process. yeah. There's like 5,000 so, bills filed every session mm. and we're lucky if a couple of 100 actually make it into law. Right, and you also, um, you're the public safety chair. Chair of the public safety mm -hmm. committee. It's been quite a challenge since after September 11th. That was uh, my next question. How has it changed since September 11th? Uh, certainly we, have, uh, we were fortunate we've passed two public safety bond issues uh, in the past year. First one was for $26.5 million, and uh, out of that, we uh, added an additional state police uh, class. Mm -hmm. We uh, added uh, some uh, more uh, police uh, resources to protect the public buildings throughout the, the Commonwealth, mm -hmm. and we've created this uh, SATIN uh, program, yeah. which has been a tremendous. Uh, my former co-chair, Senator Jugal, who's now mm -hmm. the uh, public safety uh, commissioner yeah. for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, has created that program, and that's to train the, all police, fire, and uh, emergency medical uh, personnel throughout the entire state on how to, p to respond to a, a crisis and a terrorist threat. I should also mention that um, the Saturn program is being produced by the Executive Office of Public Safety and okay. all of the local um, communities, all the local community access coordinators are actually just invited to a briefing where they spoke with, um, with Secretary Jujuga and Somerville, for instance, um, has one of the tapes that they'll be playing now there's PSAs, and there's a 30-minute program, and there's a 10-minute program, and in, within the next month, I believe, all of the different local access stations will be getting them, so they'll be playing them for the public to know. How do you think the public's um, concern for public safety has changed since September 11th? Uh, as I said, certainly their awareness has, has mm -hmm. been heightened. Um, I think certainly uh, we never expected something like that to happen uh, in this country, whereas in other countries it's almost a daily ritual, mm -hmm. unfortunately. 
And it really struck, I think, at, at the heart of, of America when that uh, took place. And we certainly, uh, and are still at war, uh, so to uh, speak, on this issue. And, uh, you know, it's, it affected a lot of things. People uh, really uh, emotionally and physically, I think it, it's affected them. And you must hear a lot of those concerns, being the chairman, um, not only within your constituents, but also from citizens from across the state. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you are running for re-election. Yes. And I know that public safety is definitely a goal of yours, but what would you say are your top three goals? Well, really is to help get our fiscal situation back mm -hmm. on track. Um, mm -hmm. As I said, it's, it's been a, um, we've seen our revenues drop dramatically. And um, we had uh, last year about $2.2 billion uh, in reserves that we've had to spend to make up the deficit from just from this year's budget. We only have about $368 million left out mm -hmm. of that. Uh, the capital gains, we were, we're collecting uh, about $2 billion a year. That's down to a couple hundred million dollars a year. So the revenues are not coming in, and uh, you don't have the money, you can't pay for these programs. And so now we have, we have to make some tough choices, and it's been very painful for a lot of people, as I said, especially the human services uh, programs. Uh, public safety uh, has somewhat maintained uh, mm -hmm. its level, right. but it's taken some cuts. Education has been a priority, and we were able to maintain um, almost uh, the level uh, that we were providing before. But local aid has definitely has been taken uh, a cut uh, this year for both Somerville and Cambridge, and that's unfortunate because now uh, the local community is going to have to make up that, that funding. Uh, so, um, you know, we all have to work together. The new governor, whoever that's going to be, and I hope it's going to be a Democrat, certainly. Um, and, um, you know, with the Senate and the House, going to have mm -hmm. to really get our fiscal uh, house back in order. And, uh, you know, I think we've learned some lessons from before, and, it's, and we're just thankful we have those reserves, those $2 billion in reserves, to make up a lot of that funding so that more programs ha did not have to be cut. Right. But um, unfortunately, even as we speak, for the fund, the level of projections uh, that we were hoping for July is off, is down by about $50 million. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so we still have a long way to go. So I think really we, that's, you know, a top priority of, of mine. So, um, our senior prescription for our elders, elders, and right. we have to maintain that. Mm -hmm. So, and human service programs, I mean, and affordable housing. So, I mean, there are a lot of issues. It's hard to pinpoint down to, to three, but uh, right. certainly those all encompass, you know, as I said, some of Cambridge, the district I represent is a, a real working class mm -hmm. area. And right. the people, you know, need uh, assistance from the government. It's imperative that we respond to that. Well, the housing, I think, especially, I mean, Housing, Cambridge and in, in Somerville, I mean, you, you are just Both thick of, of things when you talk about housing because there are so many, um, not only senior citizens, but just people that, you know, in their mid-50s and 60s that are literally being um, housed out of their housed neighborhood. Out, right. and Especially the young people who've yeah. grown up in the area and right. now really can't afford to stay here in Malaga. Right. It's really, really sad. And it must be frustrating for you as well because you've grown up in the area and you're seeing people that can't afford to live in on their neighborhood they want to screw up on. And then you're seeing these other transient um, people who are just coming in and staying for a few years because mm. this is an area that's so close to Boston that Absolutely. makes perfect sense when you're working at a job that you mm. may stay at for a few years and jet off to right. New York. Or four individuals sharing, you know, they right. can afford the $500 a month each. And, you know, not many working class families can afford it. I mean, mm -hmm. the rents are really skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. Well, you've been um, representing Cambridge and Somerville, and as if we move forward, what do you think are, what are the top attributes, say, from Cambridge, one from Cambridge and one from Somerville, that you would like to see implemented, whether it be the culture or issues or laws that have been, local laws that have been passed, implemented in cities and towns throughout the state? Well, I think for both some of Cambridge, it's the diversity of both mm -hmm. communities that I really want to see. Because they're really leaders. They, they, we certainly are. I mean, you know, when I see the district, when I visit other uh, districts throughout the state, and you see, you know, it's more all the same right. type. You know, mm -hmm. certain Cambridge and some of them, we have that tremendous diversity and mi mixture of peoples, and it, it'd be a tragedy to lose that because there's not many cities left in the, in the Commonwealth that that have that. So. So I take it if someone, if you're talking to a tourist and they ask you what the best part about Massachusetts is, you tell them this area? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you see it growing? I, I think Massachusetts is going to continue to, to grow. I mm -hmm. mean, certainly we have top educational and 
healthcare facilities mm -hmm. uh, right here in, in our in our midst, and uh, certainly with the biotech uh, uh, industry mm -hmm. uh, is, is coming into both Somerville and Cambridge, mm -hmm. um, which is great. And you know, I think what's what is important now is that we as leaders uh, make sure that our residents can take advantage of, of those things. And we have the uh, biomedical uh, program that Justice Start runs to train people to be able to take advantage of some of those jobs that are coming into our community. So I, I, I think that's extremely important, um, you know, because that, that industry is, is just burgeoning. I mean, oh, definitely. there's no space right. left. To, I know mm -hmm. in Kendall Square is, you know, one of the leaders in the whole country. Mm -hmm. And so now I, I know they're looking for space outside and I know there's space in some of us. So mm -hmm. it's uh, incumbent upon us to, you know, to seize that to make sure that they stay in this area. But that we also train our residents and our students to be able to go into that field mm -hmm. uh, as they you know, graduate from high school and college. Gubernatorial candidates, they do a lot of advertising on TV and people get kind of just desensitized. They, they feel that's what all candidates do and it's really not like that on the, um, on the, represent, on the legislative le level. Mm -hmm. What's your approach to campaign? What have you been doing all summer? I also mm -hmm. probably should mention that everyone else is enjoying their summers. You know, it is a campaign season, and mm -hmm. September 17th will be here before we know it. Well, honestly, Milos, every day to me is a campaign. Mm -hmm. Every single day is a campaign. I mean, you must enjoy what something. you do. I love it. I mean, mm -hmm. it's certainly, you know, as you said, I'm on the City College of mm -hmm. Cambridge. I have a campaign every year. Uh, but to me, um, it's just being out there with people. And I think if there's one thing you can say, that Tim Toomey does go to just about every event that he can go to to meet and talk to the people. I think that's the most important thing, face-to-face -face contact, mm -hmm. to talk to the individuals, you know what's on their mind, you know what needs that they have, and then you try to address them. But I think that's the most important, is the constituent work. They have a district office, uh, and these cameras are staffed uh, full-time, uh, either by uh, staff or volunteers, that people can go instead of having to travel into the, the state house. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's important. I think the constituent work is the most important. And, you know, that they feel that there's somebody there listening and trying to help them. Are we always successful in every issue that people come to us? No, mm -hmm. no question. Do they, we give it a thousand percent? Absolutely. And What's your most memorable experience campaigning? You know, one of the nicest things I remember receiving uh, was, and I don't want to go into the whole details, but uh, it was, it was a, a, a single woman, and uh, it, um, I got a nice card from her and a picture of her newborn. Oh, very and nice. And to thank me for the help uh, that we had provided uh, during that time. That oh, very nice. Through. So that to me was one of the those most things, memorable. Those, so those something I mean, I really, you know. Yeah. Those are the times that make it worth like it. That, that makes it worth when you're it. having a, and, a tough uh, day. Yes. Well, Tim, I want to thank you for being on Middlesex Update. I want to wish you the best of luck. We have Tim Toomey. He's running for re-election for state representative. He represents um, a large chunk of Cambridge and a little bit of Somerville. Right. Thank right. you for on Middlesex thank Update. Thank you. Hopefully you'll be back again. Thank you very much. Great. Good luck. Thank you.